let's uh i guess we'll just start yeah On August 20th, 2014, Christian and Circle Tracer Josh Fierstein submitted a challenge and oh, offered a reward God. to anybody that could provide me proof or evidence that God does not exist. I think. Uh, okay, so we're we're addressing uh, counter arguments here, but do we want to address this guy too? I mean, <laughs> not really. I guess I don't know what I was expecting. This video is from 2014, right? Yeah, well, so it's of course from it's going to be like lowest common to not really 2016. Yeah, 2016. Yeah, this guy was like popular fodder for YouTube atheists like a long time ago, like way before 2016. It's kind of weird that he would bring it up, but maybe it's for a reason. So that's all right. I mean, I, I just think that the statement there's no proof God doesn't exist is like really dumb. I mean, that's so, that's, but that's obvious, right? We don't have to go over that. Yeah. I think it's rather ridiculous that there's been people for a long time that have said that God does not exist, and yet they're unarmed because they have zero evidence and zero proof. How would that ever hold up in a court of law? Unfortunately, or rather <laughs> thankfully for his bank account, this is an unfalsifiable hypothesis. Logically speaking, one does not assume that something exists until we can prove that it doesn't. It's the other way around. And it's important to... Um, at some I, point, is this video going to be about morals? Yes, yes, I promise it will be. I mean, I, I, I think the three of us would agree with that statement. However, I think the three of us would not agree as to what constitutes proof. Probably not, but I. That's. It seems kind of tangential. I, I, I'm waiting for the the other shoe to drop here. All right, then. I feel like this is probably been addressed in a bunch of other videos by this guy so i'm just wondering what this has to do with the actual topic of the video right to note that the word assume is an important part of all this do we know for certain that there is no god no is it reasonable to conclude or assume that there isn't one so long as there is not enough evidence yes the burden of proof mm. is on the one making the claim no one else thus the challenge itself is logically backwards while presenting this challenge mr fierstein made the following scattershot argument now, the problem with truth, and absolute truth, is I believe that this generation doesn't like that concept because it means that there's moral law. It means that now that there's something that they will one day have to answer to. In fact, if you were to ask an atheist, I don't think he would ever actually be able to condemn something like the Holocaust and the killing of millions and millions of innocent people. Why? Because he just believes that they're an accident. They're just merely some molecular structure, that, that they're just part of this scientific thing called evolution survival of the fittest now, now bosun how, how yeah. do you feel about this initial argument given well i mean look obviously this this guy's not firing at all cylinders intellectually but is he wrong fundamentally about what he's saying i don't know that i can disagree well I, with I, the I, fundamental point i i ask i ask you because i know this is like one of the big things you and i disagree on i i think atheists can be moral while you tend to lean that they can't. Well, obviously they can say that they condemn the Holocaust or whatever, or murder. Let's just use murder to be a bit more general about this, because that's this not a conversation that we want to have right now. But Right. They can say that they condemn that on some moral ground, but, like, they don't have any justification for that. Mm. Well, we'll see where counter-arguments might give some justification. Yeah. Well, this yeah, is... this is the fundamental conceit of the video, right? So... Right, and I. this is why I wanted to do this with you, because I, I... But I, thought... I have a sneaking suspicion that what he's going to be doing is not actually refuting... He might spend some time refuting it. Uh, not refuting the main point of what he's saying, but sort of doing this thing that atheists like to do, especially when talking about, like, dumb Christians, is pick apart, like, the little details about how he phrases it incorrectly. Like, he'll probably pick up on, like, what do you mean they're part of this scientific thing called evolution? What does he mean by that? Is he then and he'll pick apart a point like that or something? I have a sneaking suspicion that that's what he'll be doing. But let's. I'm reserving judgment. Then was Hitler 
just not the fittest. Albeit that was a little here and there, the thesis of his observations is that atheists have no morals, which is one way of saying that an atheist has no basis for morality. If this is correct, it would mean that religion, particularly monotheism, is necessary for established- No, no I, I, I need to stop him here. Um... Because he, he, he makes this very weird statement that I'm extremely uncomfortable with, and it's the notion that particularly monotheism. I mean, that, that most certainly would be true for that singular individual, right? But uh, I would not disclude polytheism from the notion of, quote, being moral, right? Like, that, that sounds like it's attempting to set something up. Yeah... It's a bit of a weird statement to make, but again, if he's responding specifically to uh, Fred Durst, then he then you, <laughs> I guess he has a point. Right, right, right. ...a moral basis. So with that, let's examine a brief history of religion. Christianity was founded in the first century CE. However, this was not the beginning of monotheism. The first monotheistic religion, Judaism, was... Oh. Uh, oh. Sorry, buddy. The first monotheistic religion was uh, Atlantean uh, magic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Judaism does not start in the 1800s BCE. That's an extremely generous statement. I think what he's confusing is is the historical Abraham's existence with the start of Judaism. Which, if you want to point, if you want to put Judaism's starting point there, fair enough. But historical Judaism as we know it doesn't start until, like, the year well, 600 B.C. If you're going to talk about Judaism as in the religion named after Judah, you probably can't start it before he's born. <laughs> right, right. But, but I mean, I the concept of his religion probably does pre-exist him, though. What do you think they called it before Judah was born? Talmudism uh, or something? I, I, don't, I don't think they called it anything. The, the whole labels, isms thing is something that occurs much, much later in history. I don't know about that. I mean, well, geez, Judy... you've got like religious debates going on in Egypt where they've got like the, the Aten worshippers versus the, you know, to say that the, there's no concept of that is, is a bit much. Uh, they well, probably I... had a name for the worship of Aten versus the worship of like Ra and the other gods or whatever. Well, I mean, I... I, I don't mean it in that sense. I, I mean it in the sense that back in those times, the difference between a, a, a local ethnic people's culture and their religion was virtually non-existent. Like, no, nobody looked at the Judites from an external position and said, oh, they're the practitioners of Judaism. That, that was just Jewish. Like, Judaism... It, it's a religion in today's world, sure, but it's a carryover of the Judahite culture. It didn't really start life as a religion. It started life as a culture. Can I just say that at this point, I can see exactly where this is going to go, and I'm I'm voting that we might just like skip this and scrap the whole episode. Because uh, maybe, maybe. This is not going to be an attack on any argument. This is going to be religion bad because people were murdered. <laughs> well, I, it, it's literally it what be. I can tell exactly because he said, let's look at a brief history of religion. What it's going to be is, um... You say atheists can't be moral, but uh, what about uh, the Crusades and like, oh Jesus Christ. I, I, don't, I don't think he actually makes that argument, but we should probably see where he actually goes with this argument. Just a, just a slight, like, you know, this timeline is not correct. It was founded in about 1800 BCE, but we can go back further than this to the Indus Valley, perhaps as long ago as 2300 BCE when Hinduism was founded. No. Although, no. you know what, I, I guess, I guess Gobleki, uh, Gobekli Tepe didn't have a religion. Well, hold up, to be fair to him, Gobekli Tepe was not well known back in 2016. Uh, well, but... when, when was uh, Magician of the Gods uh, published? Probably Ma well before 2016. Uh, Magicians of the Gods was... Let me, let me quickly look this I up. mean, I know you don't like Ram Hancock anymore, but Gobekli Tepe plays a pretty big role in that book. Oh, no, I, of course, yeah, it of course. Popular. It came out in 2015. However, what, what you're looking for, Boson, is his original book, Fingerprints of the Gods. 
Oh, for fuck's sake. Come on. Now, now, Fingerprints of the Gods was released in 1995. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Because Hinduism was not started in the Indus Valley River civilization. The, the oh. Harappan civilization we know of, they were not the starters of Hinduism. Uh, it's pretty clear. The Hindu Vedic texts likely came from the Indo-Europeans that came into India later. So he is just objectively incorrect on the origins of Hinduism here. The oldest religion still practiced to this day. If we wanted to go back even further than this, we could travel back to Egypt in 4000 BCE, where the first religious records, the earliest Egyptian myths, can be found. Now Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure the Sumerian epics are actually older. The Sumerian texts are older. Oh, by, by, by quite a large margin, I'm pretty sure. But. Yeah. All right, so what we've, what we've essentially established here is is that he's got no idea on the history of religion and can't well, you even know what? get it right. I should probably stop trying to predict his argument, but is he going to say that like people did not have any religion before the first recorded religions um, so you'd be like how did these early civilizations stay moral if they didn't have religion typically, the argument he's gonna make? typically when i see this form of argumentation it's an appeal to sort of hunter gatherer proto morality um but we'll see I mean, look, I mean look if you if you don't think that the hunter gatherers believed in some kind of fucking sky daddy then you're retarded <laughs> i mean I I don't disagree with you. I think I think the hunter gatherers really. And did. I know that Sky Daddy is like a, a pejorative, but like honestly, bro, like you're gonna be like, no, actually, all the hunter gatherers were uh, rational atheists. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I I I agree with you. the The proto moral argument is an ad absurd, and but I I don't know whether I, mean, again, I don't know yet. if that's the argument he's gonna make, but. It, I should stop trying to predict it, but yeah, it feels I, like that's where it's going. But it, it could be, it could be. Hold we'll, we'll, we'll on. Now, naturally, it's difficult to be absolutely certain about a timeline such as this, and there's plenty of debate surrounding it. For example, some would argue that Zoroastrianism Wait, actually, no, is really the first. Go back for a sec, like five seconds. I have to admit, Sinaiticus, I think I'm converting to YouTube. Yeah, I'm gonna convert to YouTube. I mean, I'm a, I'm already converting to YouTube. I'm, I'm already I, there. I, I, you can, you know, I've been a Gnostic for too long. I'm converting to the YouTube religion. <laughs> who's, who, who's the chief deity of YouTube? It's got to be Jake Paul. It's got to be. Well, the high priestess is Susan Wojcicki, obviously. Of course, of course. Uh, we'll, we'll have to figure out the YouTube pantheon later, though. Yeah. Debate surrounding it. Great examples. Well, he's probably like a. I, I I would put him as like like a lesser god. He's like the god of YouTube fertility or some nonsense. <laughs> some would argue that Zoroastrianism is really the first monotheistic religion. But if uh, mm, not... it's one of those th it's one of those things where to even say that any like modern religion is the first of anything is so. Such, such an odd statement to make because there's so little that we know about like religious history pre like I don't know like 2000 BC even yeah well to be I, like I... anything is the first religion of X kind is just it's not an easy, easy statement to make because I mean you can say that it's the first recorded instance but like I don't know bro the, the idea that like because because there's like what between Gobekli Tepe and like the Sumerians that's like 6,000 years of history that's basically just completely dark yeah speaking, so. yeah yeah you have no idea what's going on there I, it could be anything in in my opinion uh i think people who think that zoroastrianism is monotheism have made a mistake um it's it's more or less two gods it's a two gods religion uh one that's really super evil and one that's really super good now granted we see this dichotomy arrive in Judaism later. I'm not even going to deny that. Um, but those two figures were equal to each other in Zoroastrianism. 
Whereas in latter things like Judaism, God is is God, and, and Satan really is just sort of coping with the fact that he can't beat him. That he, that, that he doesn't love him as much as humans do. Yeah, that he, that, that he doesn't love him as much as he loves humans. So to suggest that Zoroastrianism it's also why, it's first... It's also why I, find it, I always find it odd when people compare Manichaeism to like Gnostic cosmology, because I don't think you'll find anybody who is like... Yeah, you know what? The demiurge is definitely on the on par with like the oneness or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Sure. We're on the same level. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you'd find anyone that thinks that either. That's uh, well, I mean, I the, the Mormons are an evolved version of Manchaism, so I, I maybe maybe maybe. If you want to get like super schizo about it, there are even people. Uh... So like the same schools like Manly P. Hall who say that like the Hermetic traditions pre preserved a form of monotheism from before even the founding of Egypt. So, I mean, whether or not evidence belies that is it may to be seen, but I mean that's a, a belief that people have. So, right, right, right. I mean, I, again, I, 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 I feel as though we're going to hard disagree with him on this weird contingency about monotheism specifically to begin with. And I also like to point out, we're now over halfway through the video, and there's yet to really be any arguments made. Well, we'll see what they are. As a rough idea of the history of religion, we can see that it has been around for at least 6,000 years, providing a moral compass for mankind to follow. You so, so, religion starts specifically at around the 4,000 BC mark, even though we already know that that's not real. So the entire premise at this point is flawed, but we'll continue. Right. So, uh, yeah, his, his initial premises are very flawed. Usually. And according to this argument, that would mean that there was no moral code before this. Wh how? How? Why would that ever follow? Go the on. Religion has existed for since 4000 BC. Therefore, there must be no moral code before that. Well, well my, my thinking here is, is like, di like, does, is he... No, no, let's wait until he actually makes his argument, because I don't want to make any assumptive statements. But moral principles likely developed in parallel with language, art, and technology, so its roots should actually come from primitive hunter-gatherer tribes over 50,000 years ago, 46 millennia before the earliest known religious records. Okay. Uh, no. I should mention that that's also, isn't that also 46,000 years before any known records whatsoever? Yeah, like this is before known records, period. So, I, <laughs> I mean... I, this, this, this is, if, if this goes in the direction that I'm believing it is, this is an argument from silence. Oh, it will. I, I didn't want to make predictions, but now that my prediction is correct, I just find it funny. So let's continue. On. <laughs> Existed long before monotheism. There's no reason to suspect that. Ah, uh, and there it is, monotheism. Because it existed before monotheism, there's no reason to believe that atheists have no morals. No, no, no. That's not how that works. Yeah, that's a kind of a bait and switch. That is a complete and total bait and switch. Monotheism might not be the oldest form of religion, but the notion carried over simply is, is is that a religious leaning or notion of a higher power is what's required to have an objective morality. That would not let you lay claim on the hunter-gatherers, a la what Boson just said earlier, that you'd have to be living yeah. in Disney World to think that those hunter-gatherers didn't have a sky daddy. Don't we have cave paintings that depict, like, religious, uh, I mean, maybe not in our conception of religion, but, like, things that are not probably physically existent in their reality? Well, we, we, like we mystical can- mystical creatures and shit like that? We, yeah, well, yes, but we, we can take this a step further, Boson. We can take this a oh. step further. Are you okay. aware that humans are not the only religious animal? Is this gonna be about, like- all right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you say that. I, I think I've heard that before, but I don't know what, about which specific animal you speak. Elephants have been observed waving branches at full moons, committing to pro processional uh, marches, and having burial rites. You see, elephants are religious, and they aren't hunter-gatherers, now are they? So, 
we the the funniest part about this whole thing is that we have proof that religiosity precedes high technology. Yeah, I mean, it's I. <laughs> It's incredible to me how he doesn't really understand what the problem is here, because he's like, well, it would seem that religion developed at the same time as written records did. <laughs> really? Does it seem that really? way? Really? <laughs> I guess it didn't exist before that. Yeah, like the, the ancient Egyptians, who didn't invent religion, by the way, just woke up one day and I don't think like... I don't think, he, I don't think he would respond this way, but I'm imagining a situation in which you like argue with him about this, and he's like... <laughs> He says, uh, prove that religion uh, existed before. <laughs> I'll give you $100,000 if you prove religion existed before written records. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this is ridiculous in an, an argument from silence. The notion that these hunter-gatherers didn't have, didn't have magic sky daddy is, is ridiculous. I, I mean, I, I don't even think any anthropologist would be supporting this. I mean, this just sounds ridiculous. Every... every Everything we know about human tribalism involves a god of some type. Yeah, the moral I... understanding is not obtainable without monotheism. Now again, the... yeah, and here it is yeah, that bait and switch again, yeah. where it's 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 specific to monotheism, even though morals is sort of something that goes hand in hand with religion in general, and not just monotheism. Um, I want, I wonder is he is he attacking monotheism specifically because that's all he's familiar with? I would say that that's probably very likely. I mean, this is a problem I've this this is a mistake I see uh, anti theists make all the time. And for the record, I'm not saying that counter arguments is an anti theist. I don't know him personally. Um, and for all I know, he could just be like. He could even, I, I mean, I don't think he's a religious person, but he could be, and he just makes a video on counter arguments about things in general. That's not the point. I, I see this mistake made all the time where religion is equated with monotheism exclusively, and that is just not true. Hard stop. That's just not true. This historical counter-argument is subject to debate. There is a case to be made that these hunter-gatherers had their own religious practices. So let's make a scientific counter-argument as well. Stop. So, you do know you're not supposed to establish that your argument exists on weak foundations, right? I mean, for, for context, right? We know that this isn't really up for debate. We have evidence of a skull cult at Gobekli Tepe. Goes back 12,000 years ago. Or... Well, actually, you know what? I think I know what he's trying to say, Sinaticus. If morality is scientifically innate, well, that would mean that it's genetic, right? And so what we have here is a dichotomy where certain people are just genetically more moral than others. So I think that something needs to be done about these genetically inferior and moral people. Uh, I wonder who I'll, I wonder who the genetically inferior people are. They must be the monotheists. If we want to measure immorality worldwide, I have a feeling that a certain pattern will emerge that is probably not one that counter arguments would would like. Probably. Questions: Does morality have to be learned? Is it possible to have a moral code that's innate? The answer. Well, you want to know what the, the, the funniest part about that question is, is, is that monotheism and specifically Christianity maintains that the answer is yes. And I'm willing to bet that his answer is yes. So this, this is a straw man built into the prior fallacy that we just mentioned. See, by, by owning this, he's implying that atheism suggests that morality is innate and monotheism suggests it's not. No, most people, most religious people believe that morality is innate. There's a writing, uh, a statement from the rabbis. It's somewhere in the Talmud. I'll try and find it later if I can get to it. Where the rabbis state in no uncertain terms that every infant is born with Torah on their hearts. Okay? So... I don't really know if this is a counter argument. If it's something atheism and religion agree on, then in reality, it's not really a counter at all. 
all the religious people are saying is we have a reason for our innate morality to make sense, whereas you don't. Answer is yes. Well, the answer to the first one is no. The answer to the second one is yes. If you have empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another, and though empathy can be improved with the right nurture, it is ultimately a product of nature. The si What's that right nurture, though? Like, I think a lot of people would sit down and question what the correct nurture well, I mean, for empathy you know, I, is. That's the thing. I was joking about the eugenics thing. But he's just literally just saying that some more people, some people are naturally more moral than others. <laughs> I mean... Like, I, does he know what argument he's, he's making here? I I don't... I don't know. I, well, his, his first argument was pretty bad. So I'm going to assume the answer is no. Science that supports empathy is found with mirror neurons in the brain. These are the neurons that fire when you relate to other people's experiences. Have you yep. ever seen someone wipe out on a skateboard? You cringe, don't you? Those are your Sorry, mirror neurons firing because you nothing. just imagine yourself in their position. This is why we cry oh, no. while watching movies about fictional people and you feel a sense of accomplishment when sports teams that we don't play on win the game. Just the same, empathy is something that we feel naturally, instinctually, well at least most of us do, when we see another person in distress. Now at this point, Mr. Feuerstein might claim that, that God gave us these mirror neurons. I guarantee that if there were- Well, how, how is that a weak argument? No, if, if, if we're operating at a sort of- It's out of, of the gaps, Anaticus. There's too many gaps. But but it's not a god of the gaps. If we were writing under the baseline assumption that it's possible theism was true, or that it's possible atheism was true, it's equally plausible for both, then what would be the absurd notion of the theist worldview suggesting that God implanted those neurons into our brain? Like, what is the actual absurdity well, I also like that? that he just sort of brushes off, brushes off the notion of, like, people who don't have empathy. Yeah, It's well, just like, well, that's just, well, some people don't, but, well, it's whatever. Yeah, it's, and, you it's, know, that's it's kind it's of important. important. It's kind of important to your entire argument that some people just are not empathetic at all. Yeah, I, uh... Yeah, I don't really know how to respond to the, uh... To, to, that, to that, though. It's like, wh where do you go from there? I'm like, you know, you're, you're just not going to address these psychopaths that don't line up with your uh, argument because they're a minority. I mean, is, is that what the suggestion there is? I don't know. And he's not here to answer to us what he actually means by this. So. No laws and no government that you would feel wrong inside of you killing somebody. Why? Because God's written it on your heart but remember the burden would be on him to prove that not it okay so so the burden of proof would be that god put the neurons in our brains is that it because the the proof for that would be the science behind the neurons if the theistic world assumes a god behind the tools itself then the proof would be the tool would it not Like, this This is just basically, well, can you prove that God exists with science? And that's not how science actually works. Th can this is ridiculous. Not, can you prove we're not in the Matrix? Yeah, can you with prove science? we're not in the Matrix with science? Like, <laughs> well, I mean, they, they'd be like, I mean, that's a, that is a natural burden of proof, though. Because you'd have to prove we're actually in the, the Matrix anyone else to disprove it and if it can't be proven we may assume that that is not the case if you ever meet so it's it so it's ridiculous for me to assume that evolution is a force or a sort of function of the universe uh that god then used to help us develop our empathy in our brain that's that's an absurd notion even though it is fundamentally equivalent to the atheistic notion of how empathy developed. I just take it one step further, logically speaking. What I'm getting here is, is that he's, he's like expecting, he's, he's talking like one of these people who expects to have a photograph of God provided as like physical proof of the man himself. 
And as I've gone over God knows how many times... Uh, or woman. Child. Or woman, yeah. And as I've gone over God knows how many times in our various conversations, since most people claim they believe in a God that exists outside of time and space, uh, then in reality, there is no science that can actually prove God, since God exists... Uh, I'm sorry, since science exists within the confines of the known universe, and God does not. Now, I think it would be... I think from that standpoint, atheists do have then uh, a good reason to just straight up not believe. I think that that might be a good reason not to believe in God. But the flip side of that compromise is, is that it does leave God as an open door uh, for an extra logistical step so long as it doesn't actually interfere with what the actual science states. In other words, if the science doesn't entertain a god of the gaps, but you simply attribute its origins to a god, then logically it's the same thing as the atheistic version only with a god. So the idea that that can't work within a theistic worldview is not true. And I don't know why someone whose name is Counter Arguments would make such a weak argument. I have something else to say, but let's finish it before I get into it. Sure. Meet someone who makes this argument, you might consider asking them this question. If you weren't religious, would you find it wrong to murder? If the answer... Well, Bosun? If you if you if you were Indian, would you find it wrong to shit in the street? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess well, I see, guess this is, the, this is the other thing that I is that people do these hypotheticals all the time. It's like, well, if you were born as this, then it's like, well, if I was born as something else, I would be an entirely different person. I have no fucking clue. Like, if I if I wasn't religious, like they they think that the it's 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 a misunderstanding, as you stated that anti-theists have about the way that people practice religion like it's just like a button uh, it, or it's like a it's like a bumper sticker right it's like well if i took off that bumper sticker then what would you it's like no that's not religiosity is a fundamental axiom by which your perspective like revolves around right if it's... i wasn't religious i would be an entirely different person with an entirely different set of values and experiences and it would it would just ask somebody who's not religious <laughs> i mean i don't know right but i mean like you know uh, it, but at this point we get into the back and forth that's always happened Who, who's killed more people the atheistic communists or the crusaders like uh i yeah no it this comes from a fundamental misunderstanding of the notion of religion in general answer is yes that would contradict their argument and if the how what so so like uh, how how would it contradict their argument their argument is, is is that atheists don't have morals so if you posit a world where they're an atheist and they say that they'd be immoral well, I, well like, they, they, tend to, they tend to take this argument individualistically but if we can expand the scope we can understand what the issue is with the argument here so let's take Instead of religious law, let's just figure out law in general, right? So you have two societies before you. In one society, murder is completely legalized, no penalties at all. In the other, murder is totally illegal. You are killed with capital punishment if you were found to be guilty of murder. Now, in, in these two societies, which one do you think will have more murder? <laughs> Probably, yeah. I, yeah. So then yeah, we well, come well, to well, well, this that... is the conclusion. Well, no, 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 no. Let's develop on this for a second. So if, if what you're saying is that the existence of there being a legal system causes there to be a uh, lack of um, phenom uh, like, like phenomenologically, if the existence of this legal system makes it so that there is less murder, even if you can like you can say like, well, you know, even if there wasn't a law against murder, I probably wouldn't do it individually. But that's not really what we're talking about. The fact is, and the evidence sort of bears this out, is that having that system in place is beneficial no matter what. 
So you can say whatever you want on an individual basis. Like, well, I personally, even if there weren't a law against murder, I wouldn't do it. It's like, well, sure. I mean, you can say that, and that's probably because you're a good person. But if we are looking at this on a holistic level, it's very important that these systems be in place or else there will be catastrophe and chaos and whatnot. Right, and the way the way everyone arrived to that, whether this guy likes it or not, was religion. Well, you know, I can can you name a single atheistic society that decided murder was wrong uh, from the year four thousand B.C. onward? Because, uh, to be perfectly honest, with my knowledge of history, I don't know one. I don't know of a single atheistic society from the past. That managed to do this. I mean, how many atheistic societies were there before, like, eighteen hundred? Uh, zero. The answer is zero. But, but, but that, but that, in on itself, sort of ruins his basic argument, it, doesn't it? Because everything we know about human history suggests that humans came to the well, notion of what was moral through a religious framework. Well, I have a point to make, but again, I want to finish this up. We're so close to the end. Yeah, yeah, of course. Let's see of how course. he finishes this up. The answer is no. Thank God they are religious. So this entire video, the point that I want to make is this entire video is a total deflection. He is not addressing the main argument whatsoever. So if you if you uh, remember what the, the clip that he's responding to of this Fred Durst looking guy, I don't remember his name. <laughs> his point was. You know, a atheists can't have any objective basis for their morality. They can't condemn murder on an objective basis because, you know, it's, they're all just atoms, right? So it's like, you know, it's, it doesn't really matter. He doesn't really address this. He's like, well, atheists believe that morality evolved because of mirror neurons. It's like, that's not really addressing the argument. Can you create like a moral, like philosophically moral framework based on like empathetic mirror neurons? Like the how do you formulate like a legal code based on like the concept of using your mirror neurons to have empathy for other people? Like there's no, no connection there. What about humans fucking death drive? I mean, I hold up. It's hold a up. psychological we're gonna, we're gonna phenomenon to... that people are drawn to the fucking suicide in certain situations, just on a basic, like instinctual level. If we're going to talk about this shit, I mean, there's so much stuff in contradictory to like morality within human, like, nature as it evolved right like... I, but my like my point is is that like back back in the day okay let, let's let's go back to ye old hunter gatherer society right because uh because we apparently that's where uh that's why more why that's why our morality doesn't work because these guys were moral too um or or faux moral maybe back in the ye old ancient times if you raped someone they would just, like, the person who raped you, like, their dad or brother would probably kill you. Right? Yeah. So, like, how how is it that we can suggest that morals come from a naturally existent thing in our minds when we know humans also have a preclusivity to wanting revenge against people who wrong them? See... There's a devaluing of the notion of forgiveness, which does not appear in nature for the most part. I mean, I guess you can consider some behavior dolphins, lions, and gorillas do as, quote, forgiveness. But uh, to equate it to what we understand as forgiveness, I think, would be sort of uh, jumping the gun a bit there. It's like, you know... We have this preclusivity to want to essentially kill our enemies. Like, what's the deal with that? Like, how does how does that square with the so-called innate empathy deal? But I, I think any sort of little nitpicks that we have about his argument are superfluous to the main point, which is that the entire video is a deflection. It doesn't address what the main point of the... And I, and I predicted this, not exactly in so many words, but... It doesn't address the main point, the main like the, th the main thrust of what the argument is, which is that from an atheistic perspective, you can't construct an objective moral framework. And he makes no attempts to even refute that because I think he deep down he knows he can't. But the entire video is just a deflection about hunter gatherers and beer neurons, and it's like okay, 
let's just try to try to create your own society and run the legal code and moral code based on mirror neurons responses. See how that works out for you, dude. I, I applaud you. Give it a try. I'm gonna have to find a. I'm gonna have to find a uh, an atheist who will want to debate you on this. I'd interest. I'd be interested to see how that would turn out. Well, it's just like you know, like I said, the the Fred Durst guy. He's not firing at all cylinders intellectually, but like, he's he's kind of right. It's like you can't really condemn Herbert because you know, it's all just atoms, right? Like that's. Like, you can say what you want about mirror neurons, but the base of your philosophy is that. You can't run away from the fact that you believe in an entirely indifferent mechanistic universe.